Oh, I've seen a flying saucer. You've seen one? Yes, Where definitely. Unidentified aerial phenomena. To cover up our mistakes. I've met people who swear they've seen Bigfoot. <laughs> Join us for a journey into the obscure. You are now listening to The Wow Pod. All right. But yeah, so that's our news for today. Now on to the, on to the meat and potatoes. Tonight, we Jared's would like, bringing it. Yeah, we'd like to talk about uh, shadow people. You know? I, I spoke with someone today that we both know um and interestingly enough she was telling me about an incident she had last week where she walked into a room and saw a shadow person sitting on the edge of the bed and she said that she had never seen one before so she was kind of like trying to figure out like what what, where is it it was sitting there could she see it's so outline clearly she or? didn't even know i didn't say that we were doing a show on shadow people she just called to tell me about her experience really and she said i just i don't know what it is but i walked in and it was sitting on the edge of the bed and i thought it was it was a kind of a, a light being cast from the curtain so i didn't recognize right away that it was a shadow person i was kind of looking around the room to see how this was being created when it turned its head towards me And she said, right then my heart started to race and I was kind of frozen for a second before I didn't freak out, but I just slowly backed out of the room (laughs) and then put my back against the wall because I didn't know what else to do. And she said she stayed like that, kind of frozen for 30, 40 seconds. And then for whatever reason, she said, I'm not going to look back in the room. She just said, I just left the house. This is a person who would not I don't think normally have these kinds of experiences. So it was interesting. You'll and I was like, tell me who it is. So after. I was like, I was like, that's interesting. Cause Jared is going to cover shadow people on our show tonight. And she was oh. like, Ooh, that's creepy. Yeah. Hopefully so. I didn't bring the shadow people <laughs> to her. So shadow people, where did they come from? Well, um, they're kind of, uh, in some ways they're historical. So you've got the, the, You've got like the old hag and the incubus and the succubus, things that haunt you in your bed at night. The old hag would jump on your chest and, and mm-hmm. compress your chest. Those, those kind of fall under the kind same. Kind of like Amber um, ex- described to us in yes. her story. Yeah, that, that, the ghost story. Mm-hmm. So you've got things like that. But Shadow People, the name and uh, kind of – what they we vision them today came out of around 2001 coast to coast art bell um was interviewing a native american elder named thunder strikes it's a great name yeah and you can go and find these interviews and and uh on that show they started it they encouraged listeners to submit drawings and and descriptions of shadow people and a lot of drawings flooded into the show no so after that it was kind of a kind of a reoccurring theme on the show a lot of people would call in with stories of uh shadow people in their room and you know things like that so there is a historic folklore and then kind of a modern um mythology built up around them so are they are they are they always evil we don't know we don't know there's interactions always there's skepticism as to where they're from too are they interdimensional are they do they live side by side with us on earth and we can only see them at certain times most of the time they're described as um being male, sometimes with hats on, sometimes um, the shadow's not like a flat shadow where it's on the wall and you just see the shadow on the wall. The shadow has depth to it and kind of a 
I don't know if texture is the right word, but a depth that Mm -hmm. flows with the body. And so people speculate as to whether, you know, it's, it's a, it's a quick dimensional crossing or a different light pattern is passing through your environment to where you can see it. Like they're, they may be there all the time, maybe not. Creepy. But we do, I did dig up. um, I'm so glad I've never seen one. (laughs) I dug up five terrifying stories. Of shadow people? Yes. And this is on the occult museum. Okay, so uh, shadow people I think would be scary because they they have that three-dimensional feel. That, especially if they act like the succubus. The succubus is the female who... Who uh, the first succubus is Lilith, which was Lilith was made the same time as Adam biblically, mm-hmm. and she became a demon. In the she Bible? became the mother of demons. In the Bible. Yes. Well, yeah. So apparently, Adam and Lilith were made at the same time. You really should read the Bible. Well, <laughs> yeah. like Lilith didn't want to be subservient to Adam, so. God told her, well, you have to be. And she said, no, I'm not going to do it. So he cast her out. So she cursed his name. So he cursed her to, you know, be the mother of demons. So then she is the ink is the succubus takes um, <clears throat> little boy's seed and makes demons out of it. Wow. And then you've got an incubus, which is the male one, which comes into rooms and violates young ladies. They both tend to target teenagers. I think it has a lot to do with the the whole masturbation thing with youth that come out of religion. And then uh, <clears throat> and then you've got the old hag, which is kind of a witch that tries to steal your breath or steal your life by mm-hmm. jumping on your chest. Uh, they you tend to get paralyzed when she's there. So oh. it's like that sleep, um, what do they call it? Sleep paralysis. Sleep, yeah, sleep paralysis. You know, and then, uh, and, and some, some stories I've read, the shadow people seem to be unaware that you're there. So what if you are crossing dimensions mm-hmm. and they don't see you? They're just going about their life. What if they, see if something out of the corner of their eye and they're like i don't want to look at it you're both freaking out and he slowly turns his head it looks really he's like the, malevolent to you because he slowly thing. turns his head but really he's just like i'm really scared i don't want to look at it what is it i don't want to look at it <laughs> i mean this can't be happening this can't be happening <laughs> nobody's gonna believe me <laughs> they've got a therapist <laughs> never believe what happened to me the other night <laughs> <laughs> They're going to yeah. talk about us on a podcast. And some of them theorize that they're, you know, demons or or uh, entities from other planes that are evil. Some people even theorize that they're neutral, like sometimes good, sometimes bad, a lot like the jinn are. Mm. Or in some stories, demons. Creepy. So, yeah. Okay, so. All right. First story's called come with me one night i awoke paralyzed i looked towards the window my eyes being the only things that could move sitting on the window was a dark shape of a man who was watching me inside my head i could hear a faint voice saying come with me i could slowly feel myself dying or what i thought was the experience of dying my breathing stopped and I could feel my heart beat slower and slower. I was terrified, and with every ounce of energy, I forced my body to sit up. The moment I sat up in bed, the apparition disappeared. I was completely drained physically. I noticed that the time on the clock was 3.15 a.m., the witching hour, huh? Mm. Is that the witching hour? That is the witching hour. Yeah. This occurred a couple more nights during that month. The last time, I almost gave in to the urge to follow him. The death sensation was scary at first, 
but it was exciting at the same time. Kind of like the first hill on a roller coaster. What? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a couple of years since his first meeting, and I've been moving from place to place hoping to avoid contact with this being. It always seems to find me within a few months. No matter where, sorry, it always seems to find me within a few months, no matter where I go. Sometimes I want to be left alone, but this being and the other things that haunt me are always around. They don't understand how tired I can get at times. So <clears throat> to pick this apart, he's being haunted. Yeah. So Or she, maybe it's a she. Oh, that's terrifying. So level one is seeing them. Mm -hmm. Level two is hearing them. And I would say level professional is feeling like you're dying in their presence. Yeah. 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 That would be. Uh... Oh, that would be awful. That'd be awful. I've heard people talk about that sleep paralysis and they, Thankfully, I, I think I may have had it once or twice um, just for a few moments between awake and asleep where I couldn't really, you know, mm. move my body and things, but not long enough for me to, you know, it, for it to scare me. Well, isn't there a chemical in your body that's released as you fall asleep that causes sleep paralysis? Right. So th the idea is our bodies are, they're pretty smart in the, in the design and certain body functions for instance like digestion when you sleep is ramped up but other body functions like motor skills are scaled back and it's done so that during periods of rest things things that can't be done when the blood flow is moving you about are taken care of like digestion and immune support so that they they think that the particular hormones that are released that trigger that, that, you know, in people who suffer from really long bouts of sleep paralysis, there may just be an imbalance in that particular hormone. Mm. And those of us who have just had that, or if it's a hormone that needs, that's required to shut off that initial hormone, right. maybe that one's right. Or if, or if you just get it, you know, momentarily, like I've had it, it's, it's generally just, you know, your body hasn't caught up. You kind of walk, woke yeah, up quicker than Yeah, you. your eyes are awake, your brain is kind of awake, but your body hasn't caught up yet, so. Okay. But still scary. They, they claim that in that sleep paralysis, that level of not having any control brings about fears of, you know. Oh, yeah. And, and, oh, yeah. and demons often play a part in that. Well, I used to have nightmares all the time when I was little. And I was little, little. I mean, you remember this. Mm -hmm. And uh, you would sleepwalk and uh, you know, lots of things. But nowadays, I rarely even dream. I, you know, Which is so strange because you, you were pretty active when maybe, you were younger. Maybe it was so bad my body said no more dreams. And, yeah, I mean, perhaps. Bodies are yeah. smart. <clears throat> Next story, no eyes. Oh, I things was, need to always have <laughs> eyes and only one set. That should be Not the like rule. a spider. Yeah, or a... one set. Like, why you got to be greedy? You don't need <laughs> more than a set of eyes. <laughs> but they've got to make that web. They've got to have yeah. lots of eyes to articulate. Where I to think they should only have four legs as crossing. well. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Only take what you need. Drain the swamp. Drain the swamp. <laughs> the draining thing is how Betsy wants to catch a Loch Ness monster. <laughs> For those of you who haven't heard it, <laughs> I say drain it. <laughs> Problem solved. Drain You'll it. know if Nessie's there or not. What if Nessie... Uh, yeah. Kill Nessie. <laughs> I was about 10 or 11 when I went to this house. It was daytime and the building was well lit. Ooh. I looked into a few rooms and nothing out of the ordinary until I turned into a hallway and there it was, suddenly at the other end of the hall, just looking at me, even though it had no eyes. 
the shadow person and I looked at each other for some time. And I didn't think it was real until it started walking towards me slowly. I turned around and he had traveled about seven meters in a split second. Nope. For those who don't know, a meter is about three feet. Nope. <laughs> so he, he had traveled across the room about 21 feet. That's, that's the distance. I finally made it out of the house and I looked again. It had stopped at the door almost like he was unable to leave the house. Then he simply turned away and walked back to where it was. Oh, what if shadow people are just collections of energy and our perception of them is evil because we don't understand them? Or a dark energy that yeah. swallows the light. Oh, yeah. What if it's bad? Mm. What if shadow people are dark matter? Yeah. Like dark matter come to come to life, mm -hmm. or what if shadow people are are uh, <clears throat> memories such as ghosts, the ghosts we've talked about before, which are memories on on the psyche of the earth. Mm -hmm. Just residual energy. Yes. Ooh. Or no eyes. That's no good. What if shadow people hunt us? Oh yeah. What if missing four one one is just a bunch of shadow people murders? Shadow people and Bigfoot. Yeah. What if Bigfoot is a shadow person? What if Bigfoot has shadow Bigfoots? <gasps> do you think? Level. Do you think Bigfoots? Oh yeah, that is next. Okay, so if there are big feet, Bigfoot, big. We're just going to say there are because. Okay, so do you think they have experiences with spirits and ghosts and, and That's a like? a big question. Do you think dogs? That, they say that dogs because, would be able to perceive that stuff. Um, Gidget barks at dumb things. You think Gidget? I've got Gidget's daughter. <laughs> Whatever brains Gidget has, <laughs> she didn't pass on all of them. <laughs> Poor Dozer's got half that amount. Yes, oh. and she's twice as needy. Oh, for crying out loud! This I wonder if I wonder if dogs perceive, like they claim they do, you know, spirit or yeah, yeah. The dogs see stuff and and feel stuff and and are more alert to the world around. So I need a more uh, I need a a better guard dog for shadow people because I don't think Gidget could do it. Yeah. I'm just saying. I uh, yeah. But you never know. Hmm. Maybe Yorkies are the secret. <laughs> the antidote. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Story number three. A presence in the house. A few a few months before my mother died, she and my sister were discussing strange happenings at our old home. My mother stated that she had seen a dark shape originate from the closet of her bedroom several, several times, and she proceeded to describe this being as appearing to be wearing a dark cowl covering the upper torso. <clears throat> my sister was amazed by my mother's description of the shape <sighs> that she had remembered as standing over her crib and poking her with a bony finger. Oh. It sounds like an old lady, an old auntie shadow, a shadow auntie. Yeah. With <laughs> terrible makeup on, has a little mustache, <laughs> wants to pinch your cheek. <laughs> Don't ever say that to my aunts. They're <laughs> lovely ladies. And I'm scared of all of them. <laughs> they called me and asked if I had had any sightings in the house. And I told them of the shadowy being. That, oh, where am I at? Da, 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 da. All right. Dun, dun. Okay, yeah. They called and asked. They called me and asked if I had had any sightings in the house, and I told them of the shadowing being that had constantly stood at the foot of my bed, leaving me with the fear of the night so strong that I would not go to sleep without my covers wrapped around my head, forming a blindfold for my eyes. I can that still, makes it worse. Oh yeah. I need to see. <laughs> well. I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know which is worse, but I can still remember sensing this thing and knowing 
that if I looked out from under my makeshift blindfold, that I would see it standing there. Ew. My brother also told us of the little man that would come out of the closet just about every night and stay in his room. His shadow figure was more viewable, even allowing my brother to describe the strange tam like hat that they tam is that a type of hat or tan i guess tam like hat that the being wore all of us will admit to the fact that growing up in our rooms a sense of anxiety would start at the base of your feet as you started up the steps oh no 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 sleep downstairs a haunted house easing somewhere after you got to your room and checked out and checked out for the dark ones. Did I ever tell you Tucker's ghost story? Oh, you did not. That was creepy. Okay, so finish this one. <laughs> but none of us would come down those steps alone and turn our backs to the landing. So it sounds like they felt the right as the haunting as they... right on the top of the stairs. Why would you keep going to sleep up there? I, I would pitch a tent out in the yard. Yeah. We would back down those steps. Believe it or not, it still makes my skin crawl when I talk about it. Oh, that's creepy. Tell me about Hunter's okay. ghost. Okay, it was Tucker's. Or Tucker's. So Amber lived behind the mortuary. Oh, yes. I told you about this, right? Let's give a review for the listeners. Now, this boy, at the time, he's about four. No, he was two. He was two. He was just barely talking. Just a little guy. Yeah. So we got to Amber's house, and this is the first time he'd ever been there. Well, he And, didn't, and he they didn't. had just turned this building into a mortuary. Right. It, it had been a mortuary for maybe uh, six months. If that. And Tucker, yeah. of course, has no idea what a mortuary is. And this is. is a little tiny town where, before that, it was a restaurant. Yes, it was a glad, pizza place. It was glad it went in that direction and not the other. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, and the family that ran it were a nice family. Great family. So, and, and Tucker at this point had never experienced any, any death. Nope. But he sits next to the, and I didn't even know it was the mortuary door. <laughs> so, otherwise I would have said, come over here. Don't sit by that. But he Well, was, let me lay out the 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 visual so they've got a two-step concrete porch maybe eight foot by six foot that comes out the back and a big metal door that was it was one of those wide ones about four foot yeah, wide about double your width but it wasn't a double door it was just one big metal door yeah a big metal door in the back and that was what they would use to uh will in the uh the gurneys and caskets and casket trolleys and what have Right. It, so Amber hadn't lived in this place very long, so I had no idea that that was the door. I knew the mortuary was there, but I had no idea that they would take th people in and you, out that You didn't door. even think about it. No. So we were all, we were helping Amber. I think we were catching snakes or something. That house was infested with snakes. My boys like to catch them. So and bugs. And so we it were, was kind of a tired house. So we were helping Amber with something and my little guy's playing and he sits down in front of this door and Taryn says to him, what are you doing, bud? Because Taryn, Taryn, is our niece. Taryn knows what the door is for. And Tucker says, I'm playing with my friends. They live in here. And Taryn's all, you're playing with your friends. And Tucker says, yeah, they're dead. Yeah. This is a little tiny. Door. And I was like, they're what? What door is that, Taryn? <laughs> and Taryn's like, you got to get him away from that door. That door goes to the mortuary. <laughs> and I was like, you're what? And Tucker, just, just like nothing had happened, he got up and went and kicked rocks or whatever and left. But just as plain as day, he says, I'm playing with my friends. They're inside here. At the back door to a mortuary. They're dead. He has no idea. What do you mean they're dead? You've never seen anything dead. Yeah. It was strange. It was strange. Well, that so. mortuary also had music would come on and play at certain times at night. So strange. Now, it makes you wonder if maybe the guy worked nights. You know, you'd think a mortician might work nights. Got to get stuff ready mm -hmm. for the proceedings the next day. But there's no cars around the mortuary. Yeah. 
So, so he's since moved to a different building and now yes. but it's people a did gift live, shop. People did live <laughs> upstairs, yes, but it did not become a food place again. No, it did not. They might oh, sell phew. ice cream later. Yeah. So anyway, that's my... But yeah, the mortuary was Tucker. next door to an ice cream party. Yeah. They shared the same building. It was <laughs> interesting stuff. Yeah. Anyway. That building's had a lot of crazy stuff happen in it. I, it's a really it had old... No, it's a really old building. It's got a lot of history. Had an apartment up top. Yeah, I've and, been in there uh, a couple of times. And uh, uh, a girlfriend, not a girlfriend, but a friend that was a girl lived up there. And apparently the owner had put spy cameras all over mm -hmm. him. And, and this was back before you could buy those little tiny spy cameras. So he had like a hole drilled and then a full camera on the other side of the hole in the bathroom in the bedrooms and all this stuff i guess he got caught that's what i heard yeah, yeah i don't that, know for that's sure that's what i heard there's there's three apartments um there's an upper level there's the middle level and then there was a basement apartment and the basement apartment apparently was in such poor repair that they just backfilled the entry but i knew the person that lived in the basement apartment and when when she lived there um, the two above her were empty. So we would always just go hang out in those apartments mm. and they're creepy. It's a, that's an old building. Yeah. A lot of history in that building. Yeah. So. All right. <clears throat> Another story. The night before my experience, I had been the target of poltergeist activity. I don't mean the mischievous kind of poltergeist. The presence in my room was downright evil. Ooh. That's another story, but I do believe the events were related. The night I had my experience, I went out to the bathroom. This was in the middle of the night around 1 or 2 a.m. As I walked into the kitchen, the bathroom is connected to the kitchen in my house. I was still jumpy because of the pre previous night. Therefore, I turned on every light on the way to the bathroom. When I walked into the kitchen and reached for the light, Excuse me. A shadow oozed out of the sink. No. <sighs> nope. I told myself it was just my imagination until it turned around and came towards me. There were glowing red eyes glaring at me from the area where the face should have been. The feeling I got was a definite presence of evil. Again, like the night before. I screamed and ran out of the room then spent the rest of the night in my parents' room on the floor. I'm not ashamed to admit it, even if I was 20 at the time. Mm. Coming okay. out of the sink. Listen. Don't let Tucker hear that. Yeah. You may have to go back into the old trait where dad had to go to the bathroom. Tucker. What did he say was, was under there? Zombies. Zombies. Zombies <laughs> lived in toilet drains. And so we and had under to. under the sink. And under the sink. So every, his bathroom ritual was you had to go in there and open the doors under the sink so he could visually see that there were they no zombies. They had to be left open while he went. And then. And you had to stand there with and him. And you had to stand guard and you couldn't talk to other people. Yeah. You had to pay attention <laughs> yeah. because, and I would ask him to reason with him. Well, buddy, why do you think the zombies are in the toilet? And he said, cause they eat poop. <laughs> <laughs> that was his imagination. And so I was like, first of all, we're going to have to better govern the things that you're watching on YouTube. And uh, second that of all, <laughs> maybe an older brother told him. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Perhaps. Yeah. Hunter or Johnny or Garrett are just <laughs> crying, laughing because they taught him that. I don't know, but it was hilarious. Cause, and it had to be his dad. It had to be because I wasn't strong enough. He let me, he let me yes. stand sentry a couple times, but usually it had to be <laughs> Cody. Cody. So anytime he'd go to the bathroom, I'd say, you better go watch for zombies. Oh, <laughs> you had to go stand outside the stinky bathroom. A while tiny Tucker. guy'd come up and <laughs> you'd have to. He doesn't do that anymore. No, thankfully. well, he was just a little guy then, but four or five. What a kid. Drains. So Stephen King ruined the drains in like showers at, I still, I won't. I'm sorry. If we go swimming, I'm not going to stand over the drain. That's where the clown came from. No, the clown came from the gutters. No, but in the one scene, oh, yeah. the, the balloon 
pops the top of the drain off and then it goes yeah and it comes out of the drain and then the clown no things cannot come out of drains they're <laughs> sacred spaces uh, don't gonna, ever look up I'm saint, sage all of my drains. don't ever look up snakes in toilet bowls oh, or snakes in drains i i I don't look at spiders and ears. I don't look at snakes and drains. I just skip right past that like it doesn't exist. If you do want to send any good pictures or videos, <laughs> oh. Betsy at Weird Obscure World or the wildpod.com. Yeah, I can't do it. I can't. We got one more story. Shadow child. Oh, see, that's another question. If there's adults, are there like creepy little oh. children? Well, if it goes off the story of Lilith, Lilith has babies, babies that are demons yeah. demon babies i wonder if they're cute <laughs> like they have kind of chubby cheeks and you know their horns like are just nubs like, Ooh, i don't know <laughs> like their wings are too small to fly but they <laughs> flap and they're all they're all chubby and yeah i don't know breathe fire i don't know what babies mm. demons would do but <clears throat> it was probably 10 years ago Back in 1999, I don't recall the month. So this story is obviously, you know, more than 10 years old. When I was living in a rental mobile home in Pleasanton, south of Antonio, south of San Antonio, sorry. My ex-girlfriend and I experienced a shadow person in the form of a child. Oh, two people experienced it. Mm. It was early in the morning around 3.30. To 4 15. Uh, which hour? hour? 3 to 4 a.m. Yeah. When my ex and I were in the living room sleeping on the floor, and all of a sudden I just woke up. I opened my, my eyes, and in front of me was a shadow that looked like a little boy. It was just a dark black that you can't describe. It had no physical appearance of clothing, but just pure blackness. It was facing me for just a few seconds. When it took off running, to my right down the hallway. That's so, right. Run. It took off running. And so I'm saying, you better be afraid. <laughs> the hallway light was on at, at the time, and I could see the shadow very clearly. When it ran off, all I could hear were the footsteps being created as it ran down the hallway. Mm -mm. The noise sounded like feet running across the wooden floor. But the weird thing was, the floor was carpet with a vinyl plastic cover. What does that mean? Had carpet and then, oh, it had a clear plastic. <laughs> okay. So we wouldn't get the, someone put grandma couch covers on the floor. Listen, do you remember Celia? Celia, if you're listening to this, your sweet mother did this. She, she had plastic runners and you had to stay to the runners because she wanted her vacuum lines to stay in her beautiful pale white carpet and she had plastic covers on the couches. <laughs> I, this is a this this is being told by someone who learned that from their mother. <laughs> At the time I was so scared that when I saw it I didn't move. Another weird thing about the experience was that my ex had woken up at the same time. When it ran off all I heard was did you see that? Oh, my hell. I knew I wasn't the only one that had seen it and that it wasn't just my imagination. After that, we both stayed awake the rest of the morning just trying to understand what had just happened. My ex would always tell me she would hear a scratching noise coming from outside, but I didn't believe her. But this had gotten my attention. After this, I never experienced another encounter with the shadow. A couple of months later, we moved out. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. shadow children no shadow people shadow children so I, I i understand it's it's easy to just say yeah these are just stories these are just things but it's it's likely that these are actual representations of events or at least the way that the person who was present for it, the way that they viewed the event. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Say this is all in someone's head. This still, still is someone's experiencing this. Yes. Whether it's all in their head or not. So that's still so scary. That, that 
alone should scare the crap out of all of us. Oh, for sure. That that people and the there are so many. The, this is not. It's not just four or five people that have experienced shadow people. Like I said, I got a phone call today about mm. a shadow person. This person didn't even know. I don't know why she thought to call me and tell me about the shadow person. But anyway, this person didn't even know that I was, that you were covering shadow people. Mm. And she was like, I just feel like I need to tell you this. You'll have to tell me about who it is after the show. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe shadow people. Yeah. I'd like to find friends or people. If you've, if you've got stories about them, hook us up. I want to hear them. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. Heck yeah. So shadow people, mm-hmm. whatever you believe about them, just imagine for a second that you experience it. Well, it, yeah, it doesn't matter what you believe. If well, you experience if you believe it, they're just an imagination. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's scary. I don't like shadow people. Yeah. yeah. I don't like the idea of it all. Well, it's, it's fun though. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us and uh, have a great Sorry week. we're a couple days late. We had a combobulated weekend oh, and boy. week last week. Betsy's been dealing with a grandbaby who's going through some hardships. Yeah. Teething and such. She's poor babies. Yes. Stay safe out there um, and uh, leave a rate and review and subscribe and uh, we will uh, we'll see you again soon. Oh, and Here's the uh, shadow guard dog right here. Have a look at it. <laughs> the <And> antidote. <laughs> the antidote is this pound and a half of fuzzy. Ooh, that's right. Yep. Thanks for joining us. Have a great week.